को भी कहा है और उमर को एक मैसेज भेजा मैंने मैंने कहा तुमने लाहौर के जलसे में मौजूद थी वहाँ लाखों बजा था इसी तरह हर शहर में लाखों बजा है और तुम सिर्फ ये अंदाजा लगा लो कि तुम्हारे लिए कितनी दुनिया दवा कर रही है इस वक्त इससे तुम्हारी हिम्मत बहुत बड़ी और तुम्हारी सेफ्टी हिम्मत करे और उसके नहीं नहीं उसकी सेफ्टी बहुत है उनको कमजोर करे के इनसे हिम्मत उनको तो अल्लाह करे और जो बाकी उनको अंधा कर दे मैं तो ये कह रही हूँ वो तो वो तो स्टेटस है दिस कंट्री जो कहते वे दे आर डूइंग इट वही ना बदलाव जैसे अथॉरिटी डू डू इट In the latest controversy, uh, the video, the audio recording is between the lawyer, the wife of the lawyer, or the mother-in-law of the chief justice, is towards PTI, which is which is not a big thing. They can have in their private life, they can have a leaning. Uh, it also, if it's true, again, it also proves that um, that th there is some kind of bias in the constitution of the benches and the proceedings of the supreme court but it it does so more in indirect way i think of all the hundreds of audio leaks that have come out so far uh, this audio leak is perhaps the most indirect and it's also perhaps um, the one that involves people who are not real direct stakeholders of what's happening between the government and the judiciary in pakistan I think the three there are three main reasons why this is important. Uh, the first reason is that this is the hot topic in Pakistan, Pakistan's biggest uh, uh, fiasco right now. I mean, although it could be economic issues, it could be security related issues, but it's not. The biggest fiasco is the judges versus the government, and um, so that's that's the prime reason why it is so relevant now. The the second reason is that um, the current government of Pakistan is taking it up and uh, they're not taking it up um, in order to find out how a private conversation can be allegedly um, uh, recorded and also an alleged conversation can be leaked. Instead of the government saying that, um, you know, like taking up uh, that issue, the government is actually Rana Sanaula, the dear ministers, actually asking for a probe into um, the contents of um, uh, the leak rather than the fact that a private conversation is leaked. So that's the second issue. The third issue is perhaps that uh, the, the Pakistan Tehreke Insaf itself um, has been demanding uh, for a probe into such leaks and now it is high time for them that they have they started complaining against the same Supreme Court that is um, uh, kind of accused to have a soft spot for them. I think uh, there there are chances of uh, uh, more severe and larger ramifications of this issue, but let's also not forget that um, in, in the cases of other Supreme Court judges, who are probably going to be the chief, the future chief justices of the Supreme Court of Pakistan? Um, you know, there were there were attacks on them, attacks in terms of from the government, the former government of Imran Khan, and there were references filed against them. And this issue of um, of spying on and wiretapping the phones of the chief justices uh, or, or the Supreme Court uh, senior justices. Um, was has been there that um, the crux of the matter that how can uh, either the justice their phones or the family's phones how can they be tapped and and how to get to the bottom of this right the audio leaks controversy has been going on since quite a while but before that it has been directly people in power elected people uh, even the prime minister's house uh, they uh, the prime minister himself has been uh, former prime minister imran khan has been involved in audio leaks it has always been maintained uh, while imran khan was in power by him 
that the audio leaks is perhaps a great thing, a nice thing. And the agencies, the spy agencies, Pakistan's own spy agencies, uh, recording elected leaders is perhaps something that should be should be okay. But that was when he was in power. Once he's out of power, now Pakistan that he can solve, Imran Khan's political party protests against any such leak. But um, as history tells us in Pakistan, it is only a hot topic as far as headlines are concerned. At the end of the day, the real issue will never be addressed that who is that entity and or who are those people involved who can act, who have the authority to hijack and record a conversation between two private parties and uh, release it to the digital and social media and hence the mainstream media carries it too. It's something that if we look at the history of Pakistan, it's, it's just going to be buried under newer audio leaks when they come. I think it would be very difficult to uh, nominate one entity behind these audio and video leaks. But there are some of the leaks that have clear indication that they are from PMLN. The other thing that is also quite possible is either the intelligence agencies or rogue elements in the intelligence agencies could also be uh, part of this conspiracy in some of them because we have to understand there's so many audio and video leaks that uh, we couldn't really say it's one party doing all of that. Uh, I think most likely it's option A, which is PMLN, and option B, which is one of the participants themselves voluntarily leaks out the audio. Email exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the U.S. because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The U.K. is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner, and not a former colonist.